Hi and welcome to MatCam for Jewelry. In this video we'll discuss rotary strategies available in MatCam. And if you're coming from the 4-axis world, this is something you probably have seen a few times and I'll show it to you how to do this in a way that you're familiar with, most likely from DeskProto or RhinoCam, um, as well as some of the new features that are available in MatCam for 5-axis rotary millings. So, to begin, we have a simple ring with some text that goes alongside and we're choosing the rotary strategy here because it will give us a one seamless continuous cut all around the ring which will make for a very clean looking cut there will be no joins um, less issues with misalignments on your mill showing up it's all done as one big step and uh, then you have a nice clean surface milled out to begin Go into your 4x tab in MatCam, select your object, select your cutter, and then go into 4-axis setting options. By default, it opens to the index 4-axis where you can set one of the preset angles. In this case, we are going to go into simultaneous 4-axis and click pick line to pick our rotary axis or axis of revolution. Once you click OK, you will notice that the bounding box here shown in green and bright neon green has changed from uh, a rectangular a squarish looking extrusion to a uh, nice wrapping kind of uh, tube like structure which hugs your ring exactly. Now that you have your ring selected make sure you view it in your cut simulator to confirm that you are indeed aligned with your rotary axis. If you're not, you'll have to flip the ring until you do get aligned. And then you're ready to begin your milling. Now the easiest strategy to use for this sort of ring would be a toolpath between two curves. As you can see, I've already created two boundary curves here simply by using duplicate edge command. Uh, I was able to do that because <clears throat> this ring has a sharp edge. If that's not the case, you could probably draw circles and position them in the correct fashion. You basically want something that hugs your geometry as close as possible. So you don't waste any time going into the blank space and cutting around the ring. This is, becomes especially important in the rotary strategy because if you weaken the support by which your uh, ring is holding on to, you might risk having the string fall off midway through the operation. So make sure your boundary curves go right to the edge but not beyond that. Once you've selected your two boundary curves, go into toolpath between two curves, select your step over size, and let MedCam calculate its thing. So here's a very rough looking toolpath. We can repeat that again with a finer setting. And you'll see that either way it does go pretty quick. So get rid of that first rough path. And you can see that in very little time you have your rotary path calculated. Let's view it on our simulator. You'll notice that the MadCam automatically positions your ring according to your axis of rotation, of revolution rather, and it continues in a zigzag fashion around your ring. Now this ring does not have to be flat, uh, it just happens to be here in this case, you could have all sorts of features on it. These boundary curves simply signify how far the bit moves on the uh, XY as the other rotating axis is moving as well. So this is a very simple operation and one that you're probably familiar with if you have worked with 4-axis mills before. Let's look at how we can do this exact same operation in 5-axis mode and then see why we might want to use 5-axis mode for rotation in general. So let's delete this calculated toolpath and go into our 5x tab 
and we will for the sake of um, continuity reselect the string and reselect our tool bit and now we're back to our regular boxy looking bounding uh, area to cut something in the rotary fashion on 5 axis you need to specify not only the axis of revolution which we have done before but also the axis of, of cutting the, the approach for our tool bit so in this case something like this uh, if you can imagine your tool bit coming down this way and your revolution axis going this way that should make sense to you we're going to our 5 axis tools and away from index 5 axis and into axis of revolution and here we have specified our two lines first axis of revolution and then the second line which MADCAM calls a spindle axis and now for obvious reasons these two cannot be the same otherwise you're going to have a pretty difficult time milling anything so there you have it we have once again seen that the rotary strategy or rotary selection has changed our bounding box to something like a bounding tube and we can perform the same operation as before by selecting our two boundary curves and selecting tool path between two curves so there we go and once again the cut simulator will show us the same result and as you can imagine there's no difference at all at this point between doing it in the 5 axis tab and the 4 axis tab now it's important to note that toolpath between two curves is not the only operation that's available to you in the rotation mode in fact you can use pretty much any of the standard MADCAM tools while in this mode and they will be executed uh, while rotating your axis of revolution as opposed to being indexed from one direction for example if you select a boundary curve that falls somewhere on the surface of your ring and perform your tools toolpath from boundary curves you will notice that the name of an operation is called revolution from boundary curves and your toolpath is now calculated while being rotated so there you go so you can select segments of your ring to be calculated this way as opposed to perhaps the entire ring likewise you can select curves that perhaps represent the boundaries of your objects and calculate them or cut them out rather using the curves along lines so let me just get rid of this previous toolpath and slow down our simulation so we can see this pretty fast cut and you will see now once again while rotating we are able to inscribe or engrave or outline our objects once again very useful for making fine inscriptions on the ring while uh, while still moving the B axis or whatever axis happens to be your axis of revolution it's worthwhile noting that all of these examples that I've shown you so far can be done on both through both four and five axis tabs even though we've specified our uh, spindle axis we haven't really done anything interesting with it in order to show you the five axis capabilities I have to demonstrate that on another model so now let's look at a very similar looking ring with one distinct difference and that being is that now instead of having a completely flat vertical wall which we can cut from a 90 degree angle let's say we have a tapered or a chamfered kind of a side at a 45 degree angle 
this would be a bit of a challenge for a four axis mill because these letters, this inscription, lies neither on the side nor on the top or the bottom of the ring. I mean, I suppose you can approach it from this angle, from the, I mean, from the one side of the ring, and try to cut it here, and then hopefully try to finish up some of it by a rotational strategy, but you're still going to have some areas that are not going to be really clean. So, let's see what we can do with 5 axes. As you recall, we have our axis of revolution defined here. But now, let's add a non-perpendicular spindle axis. So, to do that, let's create a line that's normal to this particular surface. So, we go into our line, click Normal, select our surface, and let's pick a point here that's... Uh, it's reasonable. And we'll extend our line outwards just like our other line. There we go. So this is the angle we expect our spindle now to hit the ring. So select the ring, select our tool bit, go into our 5x tab, options, axis of revolution. Pick our axis of revolution, same as before. Pick our spindle axis here, with this new tilted line, and click OK. And note that, once again, our boundary region has changed to reflect this new approach. These lines are not particularly useful to us, so let's create two more to define our edges. And we're going to use a tool path from two boundary curves to calculate this as well. Same operation as before, the only thing that changes now we can specify our spindle axis at almost an arbitrary angle, limited obviously by the abilities of your 5 axis mill. So now the mill is no longer tilting its major axis by 90 degrees, it's going in this case to 45 degrees while performing the exact same kind of operation as we've seen before. Constant rotation at an angle. Another useful feature of 5 axis rotary milling is the ability to engrave inside of a ring. This allows you to put logos, text, and other things inside of a shank or other curved surfaces that follow a, a generally round um, layout. To do this, we can specify our rotary axis as before, and then the axis of approach of the spindle axis. We go into our line command, select angled, and specify our pivot angle. For example, 40 degrees. So, then selecting the ring, selecting the tool bit, we can now proceed to our axis of revolution options, specify the axis of revolution, specify our new spindle axis, and make sure that we check off the cut inside checkbox. You will note that the boundary box or boundary cone once again has changed, indicating that we are now in a rotary mode, but in this case, rotary inside mode. For the purposes of this demo, I put in a little engraving here that consists of a number of curves that are approximately one third of a millimeter inside the ring, which means that as we cut into the ring, this will leave a nice clean etching. So let's use our toolpath along curves, click OK, and see what we've done. 
we have our rotation happening as before. Our angle is 40 degrees as we have specified and we're able to cut inside of this ring. Once again, we're not limited to just 2D lines or 3D engravings here. We can likewise use our other tools such as calculation of area between two curves, between boundary curves, and so on and so forth. That concludes our demonstration of revolution toolpath strategies. Thanks for watching.